this is the Zero SRF, which stands for Super Really Fast. I'm of course joking, I have no idea what it stands for, but it sounds cool and that is more important. At a glance you'd be forgiven for thinking it was just like any other sports naked. It has two wheels, it has brakes, suspension and what appears to be an engine, except it isn't. You see, this bike represents the future. And the future is electric. I wanted to find out if this bike was the real deal and so I headed to the English Electric Motor Company in Suffolk, Stock S40 and Italian rivals Energica, but more on them later. So who is the SRF aimed at? Well, it looks comparable to something like Kawasaki's Z900, so let's assume at this point it's aimed at commuters and the occasional weekend warrior. My very first impression is how strange it feels to have no clutch, no noise and absolutely no vibration, but that's not a bad thing, particularly if you're a commuter. No longer will your clutch hand cramp up in traffic and your legs will no longer be barbecued by a hot exhaust. Now I'm not one for reading instructions, so I tend to learn on the hoof, but I was a little bit taken back after I discovered something called beast mode. The SRF has the equivalent power to a 110 brake horsepower combustion motor, but a whopping 190 newton meters of torque, which is more than a Panigale V4. So in my mind, there's every possibility that at the first turn of the throttle, I'll be backflipped into oblivion. However, Zero have partnered with Bosch to give this bike an unbelievable electronics package that will allow you to exploit every bit of the ZF75-10 motors torque. And I have no idea what those numbers represent. Sounds like rugby scores, maybe. So we've done about 30 miles. Um, we've done it all in beast mode, as it were, uh, which is the, the highest power uh, setting that you can have the bike on. Uh, despite the mileage and the way that I've been riding, uh, the range has stayed at 75 miles. It's about 80 miles when we left the shop 30 miles ago, so that's really good. I think already I can see one of the problems with electric bikes is that if I was riding my Panigale, I'd be blissfully unaware of how much fuel I had in the bike, and I wouldn't even be thinking about it, but because that range goes up and down every time you twist the throttle, it suddenly makes you really conscious of how far you can go. And actually, if I couldn't see that, I wouldn't be bothered at all. If it just had some kind of reserve similar to how conventional bikes had, I'd be quite happy with that. So, um, we're going to get back on the bike, do some more mileage, and see how we get on. Our test bike has an advertised range of over 100 miles, but this can be affected by a million different things. Honestly, I think you're better off not thinking about it. Realistically, how many people commute over 100 miles each way to work on a bike anyway, and why would you do it? The battery, if you're interested, is a ZF 14.4 lithium ion battery, which is lovely for those of you who speak electric. And like all batteries, eventually it needs recharging. So we've done 50 miles. Um, when we arrived, it was still showing an indicated 65 mile range, um, which would imply that actually you could easily do more than 100 miles. I wasn't riding it particularly slowly, um, but I wanted to try out the, the charge function. So I used one of a million different apps that you can download online to find a charger. We're actually at a co op. It's a Type 2 charger, um, so it's not a fast charger. We're showing an hour and a half to full charge, which is quite a long time. Um, you actually have to have an app to be able to use this. So uh, you prepay, uh, plug the thing in, uh, everything fires up on the bike. The wire, obviously, you have to carry around with you, but luckily there's a, a nice storage box um, underneath what should be the tank. And yeah, plugged it in, all seems to be fairly intuitive. Um, so yeah, better go and find something to do for an hour and a half. What are your thoughts on electric motor vehicles, Mum? Well, I've never driven one, have I? Do you like polar bears? <laughs> Don't you care about them? <laughs> Think of their little woolly faces. Okay, so here's my theory. Hear me out. If you use the charge time 
to do all of the mediocre tasks that you avoid in life, not only will you have a better relationship with your mum, but you'll also be more organised. You can pay your bills, you can book an appointment, you can answer an email, or some other things that are also important. So while this thing's charging, we should probably talk about the looks. Well, let's face it, it's completely adequate, isn't it? There are clearly some style cues that have been taken from popular bikes like the ER6, the FZ1, and possibly even the Super Duke, but none of them are ugly. It has left me scratching my head a little bit, though. Why doesn't it look like a spaceship? After all, it's the future, isn't it? Could it be to encourage acceptance, maybe, or has the development gone into the mechanics and the research and development? It does have everything you'd expect from a bike in this class. Proven adjustable shower suspension, decent brakes, and despite being slightly flabby, it carries the weight very well. Let's talk about cost, shall we? It's over £16,000 on the road, which sounds a lot when you compare it to a normal sports commuter. But hold on, it does come with a two-year chassis warranty and a five-year unlimited mileage warranty on the powertrain. Now just think about that, who else offers that on a motorcycle? Absolutely no one. And you have to think of that as an early adopter price. It's new tech. Um, that price is inevitably going to come down year after year as the infrastructure improves and the cost of producing batteries inevitably goes down. When you're talking about electric bikes, you've got to stop thinking about capital cost and start thinking about total cost of ownership. So here comes the science bit. Concentrate. We're comparing the cost of a Zero SRF costing £16,490 to a Kawasaki Z900 worth £8,549. Whilst the Z900 is notably cheaper, we can already see that you'd expect to get peace of mind from Zero's unlimited mileage warranty. Our first observation is the difference in running cost at the plug or pump for maximum range. Okay, so our commuter is doing 30 miles each way to work daily, which is 14,000 miles per year, 72,000 miles over the five years of ownership. During this period, our Z900 owner will be subjected to various running costs beyond the normal like brakes and tyres, more than four times that of the Zero. Already you can start to see how the electric is paying back. From my very rudimentary calculations, a Z900 would be roughly four times more expensive to run than the Zero. When you add this into the monthly finance payments, the Zero doesn't look that expensive in comparison, and this is what I mean when I talk about total cost of ownership. Look, whether you like it or not, the world is changing, and dinosaurs like me will have to evolve, but I for one have definitely had my eyes opened. Would I trade my Panigale in for one tomorrow? No, probably not, but then I'm not who this bike is aimed at. But, would I recommend this bike to the aforementioned audience, like commuters? Absolutely I would. For me then, there are a number of quick wins that could be had with all electric vehicles, for example the sound. In my test ride, a number of pedestrians nearly had heart failures as they stepped out in front of me, and I have to say that I felt more vulnerable when filtering. Switchable sound modes, anyone? As a sport bike rider to convert now, I would want to see radical styling and slightly better range, but I definitely would consider a change. Electric bikes offer the same thrill as those with engines, but with a notable reduction in fatigue, stress and long-term costs. And just imagine, silent track days could spawn a whole new era in late night race meets and a reduction on noise complaints for tracks. That could mean more tracks could open in the UK maybe. Zero has an extensive range that I look forward to testing in the future, but they're not alone in the market. Because the Italians are here. For part two of our electric motorcycle review, you'll need to subscribe because I'll be back talking about Energica and what happens when you add Italian flair to an electric spark.